The arrangement of tools, menu items, and particularly things like the right click, these are things that are controlled by what's called the workspace. The workspaces can be changed. So you can update your workspace, you can edit it, you can get rid of tools you don't like, you can add menus that you like, you can delete menus that you don't like. All of this stuff is able to be changed. It's really important that you learn how to change your workspace so that you can change the way Vectorworks is presenting the tools and menus to make it quicker for you to find the stuff you want. The way to edit your workspace or to create your own individual workspace is to start with one you like. For example, I'm going to start with this one called Designer. If you've got Architect, then choose Architect, or if you've got uh, Landmark, choose that one. But I've got the full suite, so I'm going to choose Designer as my starting point. Next, choose Workspace Editor. This is where you get the choice to create a copy of the current workspace and to change it to suit yourself. So I always make a copy. I'm going to call it Concept Design because that's what I'm going to use it for. Concept Design. In the Workspace Editor there are three tabs, Menus, Tools and Keys. We're looking at Menus at the moment. So Menus are the things that are either at the top of the screen here on the menu or these are the right mouse click things. And these are the things that I quite like to change. These are the things that can make it much quicker for you to work. Now if you've imported any plugin objects from other places you might find you've got some um, categories here which are different. So I've got some categories here which you may not have seen. Things like PanzerCAD and ArtronCAD and so on. First of all, have a look at the way you use Vectorworks and choose to change things that make it easier for yourself. For example, if you use rendering a lot, you might want to put the rendering menu there or say along there, which will put the rendering menu up here, making it much easier to get to all your rendering options rather than going File, sorry, view, rendering, and then choosing your rendering options. Like, uh, for example, if you use a lot of lighting, you could put the lighting on the, directly on the menu bar without having to hunt for it. So we could put lighting and rendering there, and that'll give us two new menus at the top here with lighting and rendering. The right click is really useful. Things like um, objects from polyline, select similar object, uh, one of the ones that I use quite a lot, uh, I'm just going to put a separator in here as well. I think these things should be separated. Uh, create some more object, objects from polyline. Um, I'm going to put these up here. Cut, copy, paste. In fact, if you know the shortcuts for these, you could probably get rid of these completely, so you just delete them. There's a new one which is quite useful. Uh, recent changes in Vector 2011 there was one called uh, Select Connected Objects, this one here, that's quite useful, which I don't see there at the moment, so that's a great thing to put in. I always like to have in there Compose and Decompose because they're quite useful. They're under Modify in the menu bar. Compose and Decompose. Uh, edit and properties. Now this this contextual menu should automatically bring up um, things like add surface, clip sur uh, add surface and clip surface. So we shouldn't have to add those. But if we need to, we can come back there and add them. Uh, I do a lot of architectural stuff, so quite often roofing is quite nice for me. Uh, under AEC, I think you'll find one called uh, create roof and roof face. So create roof, roof face, they're quite handy and I'm going to put a separator in there as well to break them up a little bit for me. So the idea is you go through all these things and choose the things that you use a lot, things that are going to make it easier for you to use Vectorworks. That's my contextual menu when I select an object. So when I click away from everything I might want to have a whole bunch of things here 
that'll help me do things. Uh, I don't use working planes from this particular menu, but there might be other things that you want to use. So here you'd put things like uh, document preferences, maybe unit settings would be, if you change the unit settings a lot, you could put that in here. That's under edit. file I think it might be. Let's just have a look. File, document setup, units, where are they? There they are, units. So we could put units in there as well. So it would be easy to get access to our units. When we want to edit the tools, these are the tools we're going to be editing. Things like the basic tool set and so on. Now there's a lot more 3D work going on in Vectorworks 2011 and one of the things I think that should be changed would be things like the um, 3D tools could easily be incorporated into the basic tool set. Things like the set working plane tool I think could be really usefully put in here. Uh, maybe just under that point there. Just be careful when I when I bring my tool over there and it goes underneath the flyover it actually hides that tool under the flyover, so make sure that your little black line is in here, just in line with that left side of the icons. Uh, the extract tool I use a lot. Where's extract? There it is. So that would be really useful as well. The push pull tool, again, really useful. So let's put that near there. So what about zoom? You zoom a lot. But what about putting zoom underneath the pan tool? Well, you know, it's got a keyboard shortcut, it's got a hot key with the letter C, I use that a lot. Move page tool could be really dangerous. Let's just get rid of that. So just hit the delete key to get rid of that. Um, this is what your tool palette's going to look like. Can't make that any, any wider, can make it longer, but I can't make it wider. Uh, if you don't use the double line tool very often, maybe you can hide that underneath the line tool. Same with that rounded rectangle tool. So you can get rid of tools you don't use very often or push them out of the way and uh, bring the ones that you do use a lot higher up. So for example, spiral, don't use that very much. Kind of thing of the spiral as being like the freehand tool. These ones are quite useful, the rotate, mirror, split, trim, Clip that's got a few things inside it, the shear and the fixed point resize. So what I'm going to do is just try and, um, I'm not going to change my uh, set too much. But I'm just going to try and make it a little bit easier to find some things that I want. So those I think are really useful. So there are some tools I never use like this machine components. So we can get rid of it for this type of thing. Fasteners, don't need that. Get rid of MEP don't need that either. You might use quite a lot of these detailing things in some cases. In many cases you won't use any of these tools so think about getting rid of them. Remember you, this is only a copy of a workspace so we can easily change it to something else later on if we want. You know there might be loads of building tools that we just don't need. Things like campanilles or drilled footings. Just get rid of the things you don't think you need for the conceptual design phase. When you've got rid of everything you don't want, you're happy about what you've got on the screen, and don't worry, you can always come back and edit it later. Click OK. That will then save this workspace and make it the active workspace. If you need a copy of this workspace in terms of what all the shortcuts are, export this workspace to a text file, and then you can print out a copy and you'll know where everything is. So there's the location of my file, my workspace. And there it is, my edited workspace. Notice I've got fewer of these things. I've got these where I want them, units. Really easy to get to my units. If I have an object selected, create viewport, pillar, roof face, roof. Things I use a lot are right there.